What's going on guys? My name is Sam from Powell Lacrosse and welcome to the first installment of Not To Mention. In this video we're going to talk about a couple things that we need to think about before stringing our sticks and at the end of the video I'm going to give a little how-to on how to attach the first row of mesh to our head and how I string our top strings. So the first thing you're going to want to take a look at are materials. What do I need to string my stick? Well what you're going to need is a basic stringing kit and a piece of mesh. I got my mesh here. Um, as far as my stringing kit goes, I'm going to need three to four sidewall strings. Generally when I get sidewall strings, they come in a kit and it comes with four. The reason why I would need four strings is if I'm going to do a triangle top. A triangle top string is two strings. So I've got my triangle top, my base string, and then my left and my right sidewall string. After that, we're going to need our throat string. The reason why I like these is if I were to use a sidewall string as my throat string, what can happen is over time, from that ball coming in and out of our pockets, friction is caused, and because a sidewall string is more abrasive than our piece of mesh, over time, the rubbing of those two materials, the string will actually cut through, sometimes can cut through our mesh. So rather than replacing a full piece of mesh and having to restring our stick, I like using um, a throat string like this. If you don't have a throat string, all you got to do is just cut, you know, cut maybe 10 inches or 11 inches out of a sidewall or a, um, a shooting string and you can use that as your throat string. This string will rip before your mesh does and it's much easier to replace this than having to go out and buy a new piece of mesh. After that, we're going to need our heavy top nylon. They've got a really good, they've got really good structure to them. They're a little bit stiffer and the reason why we need two is because I'm going to use both of them to create our one heavy top nylon. Basically I just weave them in and out of the same row of mesh, but that's a different video. And lastly, you're going to need your shooting string. Um, this is the first shooting string that the ball is going to come in contact with as it leaves our pocket. Um, again, I really like more of the cottony type feeling shooting strings. Um, they just have a little bit better feel and they're, they're a little bit um, they're a little, again, you get a little bit more feel um, as the ball rolls over these, which I like. And again, it's all player preference. Um, I say it a lot, there is no wrong answer in the game of lacrosse. So whatever materials and mesh you choose to use, right on. So we've gone over materials. Next thing you're going to need to think about are your tools. Um, there are three tools that I really, you know, only use. Um, and I think I might have left one of them. Oh, no, it fell down in between the couch. So, tools. First, you're gonna need a way to cut your strings. Um, if you're stringing a lot of sticks, um, I'd invest in some, in some good scissors. You can find scissors on Amazon um, really inexpensively. Uh, these are craft scissors. Um, and so the, the blades on them are titanium. They're extremely sharp, so be careful, um, but they won't dull over time, you know, if I'm cutting a lot of strings um, and whatnot. So, a good pair of scissors. The next thing you're going to need is a pair of needle nose pliers. The reason why I really like to use these um, is generally for the first, you know, couple of sidewall holes. Generally, those are going to be a little bit smaller in size than the rest of them. Um, so, if I'm trying to double loop a string through, sometimes I can't quite grab the, the string through the head, so uh, a good pair of needle nose pliers really helps pull those the, the, the frustrating strings through your sidewall holes and it just makes it a lot e easier. And lastly is a lighter. Bic lighter, whatever, Zippo, whatever you want to use. Um, these are really inexpensive. Um, and, and again, it's fire, it hurts, be careful when we're using lighters, little tip. Um, so the reason why we need this is at the end of our stringing, obviously we're going to have some excess string that we're going to need to cut off, uh, unless you like to leave it a little bit long, which in my day playing, 
I really like to leave all my all my strings a little bit on the longer side and then let them fray over time and it was just as Mike says that's known as style moving on so we'll have a lot of excess string it's just a way to tip our strings so they don't fray and shorten up and also it's a good way to tip our strings to help get that string through some of the tighter sidewall holes uh, and sometimes because that aglet or the eyelet is, um, is a little bit thicker and so it's easier to just burn down the string and, um, and tip it ourselves. I will mention a lot of the materials used in stringing in lacrosse materials sometimes have a nylon base. So what happens to plastic when I heat it up? It melts. So be very, very careful. If I leave the flame on that string too long and then I try to mush all that melted plastic or that melted material down into its own little tip, that melted material can get pretty hot and it can sometimes burn our fingers. So be very, very careful. If you need help with doing this, ask an adult. And if they won't do it for you, I'm sorry, you're kind of out of luck. So, a lighter, needle nose pliers, scissors. The next thing we're gonna talk about is prep. And by prep, all I mean is really this just boils down to the mesh. Um, so when I take the mesh out of its packaging, you know, it tends to just sit in this fashion. You know, it's pretty thin, kind of like a, an ace bandage width. Um, and one thing that you'll notice when you pull it out, if you're if you're um, if you're paying attention, is one end will have a ten diamond row of mesh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the flip side will have a nine diamond row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is the row that we're going to use when we're folding over to create our top string. I don't know if you've ever heard either a nine diamond or a ten diamond top string. That's what they're talking about. Um, we at Powell, we always use the nine dim diamond string or the nine diamond top. It just makes spacing a lot easier and it's a little bit of a cleaner look. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the, the end of the mesh that has the nine diamond row and this is going to be the top of my mesh that I'm going to attach to the top of the scoop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find that nine diamond row right here and I'm going to fold it down onto the next nine diamond row beneath it. And when I fold it over, you'll be able to see that I create a nine diamond top. All right. And the one thing that we want to pay attention to when stringing um, our top string holes is a piece of the mesh that's known as the pillar. The pillar is what connects that what connects this mesh hole to that mesh hole. The pillar is that vertical connection point. So if you look on this top string, you'll be able to see that I've got these points right here. And when I attach the top string hole, that's what I'm attaching to the top of the scoop. I'm not going through you know, the fold, the piece, I'm not going through it and out that way. I'm going down through it and attaching this very point. Basically all that does is that just makes it look a little bit cleaner and it attaches the very center of that mesh hole to the center of our top string in, in, in the scoop. And what that looks like strung up, I've got one all strung up right here. And basically what that's gonna mean is that I'm attaching that pillar right to the center of, of that scoop. All right, so prep. What we're gonna do is I'm just gonna take my hands and I'm gonna, I'm gonna horizontally stretch the mesh out. The reason why I do this is for a couple of reasons. Um, depending what head you're stringing, some of the, the more universal spec heads are a lot wider at the top of the scoop. So it just makes stringing a little bit easier if I've already got that mesh pre-stretched out. And another thing is in this process of me stretching this mesh, the heat from my hands is kind of getting into the mesh and it's making that stretch a little bit a little bit easier. Um, it'll, it'll help if I, again, if I'm stringing a little bit of a wider head to already have that, that mesh already stretched out so I don't, I don't have to worry about, about flaring the head or deflecting the head while I'm stringing it, trying to pull that mesh as wide as I can in the top third 
um, or the top portion of that head. So we've got we've got our mesh prepped. We've gone over the tools that we're going to use, and we've gone over the materials that we're going to need to string our stick. So let's tie up a stick. So I've got this one all strung up. Um, it'll be the easiest way for me to show you. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to tip our string. So I've got my string already all tipped up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie a simple knot. So I'm just going to tie your, your basic simple knot. And what I want to do um, and what I want to pay attention to is how far away that knot is from the tip of the string. Generally, I like to go about an inch and a half, maybe close to two inches. One thing that you can use, pretty cool trick, um, the lines in your finger, you know, the line right here and line right here, that's about an inch apart. So if I place the knot on my string, or the <laughs> string on my finger, I'm almost to that second line, so that's about an inch and a half. The reason why I do this is that if I am gonna do, let's say, a six hitch top string, I'm gonna wanna have as much slack and as much string as I can to work with um, to get it from one end of the, of the top all the way across the top and over to the other end. So, I've got my knot tied. On the other end, I've already tipped my string. And basically, all I'm doing to tip my string is I'm taking my lighter, lighten it up, and you'll see that I've got a blue portion, oops, a blue portion and a yellow portion. The hottest part of this flame is right where the blue meets the yellow. And that's where I'm gonna stick my string in to really heat up and melt the part of that string. As you're doing this, moving the lighter back and forth on that string, you'll start to see the, uh, the, the material in that string start to kind of melt. And that's when I'm gonna wanna take the flame away and then use my fingers and roll the, thing, the strings in my finger to create my own tip. Now be careful, like I said before, because I'm introducing heat to this and I'm essentially melting the string, if I've left the heat on really, really long, A, it'll burn through the string, but two, when I go to tip it, it's gonna, the, the, you have the potential of the plastic sticking to your fingers and potentially burning your hands. So be very, very careful. I've done it enough to where my fingerprint is kind of calloused over from, from stringing, or from, from tipping a lot of strings. So, our first attachment knot. Now we're gonna take that first, that first row, right? I've got my nine diamond top string going and I've attached it to the very first sidewall hole. And you'll notice what I've done is I've double looped, I've looped the string through twice. So what I've done is I've gone in through the top sidewall hole, up through that first column that we've made in our nine diamond, back around through that, again, that very same top, that top wall, top sidewall hole, and I've done that twice. And the reasons why I do that is I found that if I, if I just loop it once, there's the potential for slack to get into, into the string in between where I've tied off and my first top string hole. There's the potential of slack to be developed right here, which can sometimes lead to some uneven, um, uneven tensioning. So when I double loop it, I can really take the slack out of the string, pull really, really hard, and it really, the strings kind of lock into one another and, and the knot really stays put. And then I can work on to, onto my first um, top string hole. So I double loop it. Now what you'll notice is that my top string doesn't run on either the front of the mesh or the back of the mesh. Right? You can see that when I fold that mesh over, the strings kind of, they hide in the fold, if you can see that. Um, the main reason why I do that is A, it's just for looks. It looks really nice. But like I said before, all I'm attaching is the very top, the, the pillar of that mesh row. I'm attaching my top string to this small little part of the mesh hole. All right, and what I'm gonna do is after I've done feeding the mesh and, and, and looping it twice, 
I'm gonna go in between the mesh, in between this fold. I'll try and pop it out here for you. I've gone in between the mesh, okay? And then I bring the string in between, out through that first row, or that first column, up through the, the plastic, down the right side of the pillar, back up through the left side of the pillar, and then back through the back of the scoop to the front, and then securing my knot after that. Again, I'll stay in between, in between the fold of the mesh when I fold it over. I'm gonna go out the front of the diamond, up through the plastic, down the right side of the pillar, over to the, up the left side, back through the front of the scoop, and then I'll wrap it right around. And I'll do that four times. If I'm doing a four hitch, I'm gonna do it, you know, one, two, three, four. If I'm doing a six hitch top string, I'm gonna use each one of these top string holes to attach the mesh. So thanks for joining me on this first installment of Not To Mention. Stay tuned for a bunch more. Subscribe, like, and I'll catch you guys next time.